Finding the correlation between two variables is a common problem in data analysis. For example, uh, suppose we measured uh, two variable x and y in multiple samples. Now I want to know whether x and y are correlated or associated. For this I can use Pearson correlation coefficient. Pearson correlation coefficient is a measure of linear association between two variables. It is equal to the covariance between x and y divided by the product of the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y. This coefficient varies from minus 1 to 1. The Pearson correlation coefficient will be 0 when x and y are independent. That means they have no association. On the other hand, for a perfect positive linear association, it will be plus 1. For a perfect negative linear association, it is minus 1. It is very easy to calculate the correlation as all data analysis software provides uh, tools for calculating the Pearson correlation coefficient. But uh, we very often use it without giving any thought. And that can lead to potential errors in our conclusions. In this video, I will discuss one such issue most people miss. The issue of sample size. Imagine that we have just two samples, not just two samples. We made two measurements for x and y, x and y are two variables. So the two measurements for x are x1 and x2, whereas for y, they are y1 and y2. I want to calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient between x and y from this data. Now to do that, I have to calculate the variance of x, y and also the covariance between these two variables. Let's start with the covariance. Here is the formula. Covariance between x and y is equal to 1 by n minus 1 into the summation of xi minus x bar into yi minus y bar and here i varies from 1 to n, n is the sample size, here for our example n is equal to 2. Now let's expand the summation for this data. What do I get? I get that x1 minus x bar into y1 minus y bar plus x2 minus x bar into y2 minus y bar. Now let's calculate the mean of x that is the x bar. x bar is equal to x1 plus x2 divided by 2. Similarly the mean of y is y bar and it is equal to y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Now after replacing x bar and y bar rearrange all the term in my covariance calculation and what do I get? I get 1 by 2 into x1 minus x2 into y1 minus y2. So my covariance calculation is done. Now I will calculate the variances. First the variance of x. Variance of x is equal to 1 by n minus 1 into summation of xi minus x bar whole square. I am just using the variance formula. Now i is varying from 1 to n, in this case n equal to 2. Now you expand the summation, what do I get? Okay, you have to replace x bar by x1 plus x2 divided by 2, that is the mean of x. And if I expand the summation, eventually I get variance of x equal to x1 minus x2 whole square divided by 2. Similarly, I can calculate the variance of y and that will be equal to y1 minus y2 whole square divided by 2. Now let's add, uh, put together all the variances and covariances that just are calculated now to calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient. So Pearson correlation coefficient for this data R is equal to covariance between x and y divided by the square root of variance of x and variance of y. Remember standard deviation is nothing but the square root of the variance. So I replace covariance and variances in this. So in the numerator, replace the covariance by 1 by 2 into x1 minus x2 into y1 minus y2. In the denominator, replace the variances by x1 minus x2 whole square divided by 2 and y1 minus y2 whole square divided by 2. Now it is very simple. The terms in the numerator and the denominator cancels and you get plus 1 or minus 1. The denominator is always positive, but the numerator could be either positive or negative depending upon the values of x1, x2, y1 and y2. 
that means for any value of x1 x2 y1 y2 the pearson correlation coefficient between x and y will be always one either plus one or minus one that means when our sample size is two using pearson correlation coefficient is meaningless okay fine what about a bigger sample size 3 4 40 something like that to answer that question i did a simple computer simulation the first step of this simulation is to generate random values of x and y from a uniform distribution for example suppose here the sample size of 3 i got this random data now calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient for this data. Note that this is just a random data set obtained from sampling from a uniform distribution. So each number is an independent random number. Ideally, the Pearson correlation coefficient should be zero because they are independent. Here is the calculated uh, Pearson correlation coefficient for this random data. It is 0 0.7605, not zero rather it is quite a high correlation now you may say maybe this data is just a loud liar okay we need to repeat the experiment so now i repeat step one to two thousands of time i cannot show you all those repeats just take uh, example for uh, there are two more repeats here is the second repeat we have a new random data again sampled from uniform distribution independently and the correlation, the calculated Pearson correlation is minus 0 0.6346. Here is the third repeat and uh, again random data sample from uniform distribution, sample size is 3 and the calculated correlation coefficient is minus 0 0.9837. So every time we have a new random data and we have a new estimated value for the Pearson correlation coefficient. Now I have calculated the average of those correlation coefficients. Now remember as a Pearson correlation could be positive or negative, so I have to take the absolute value to calculate this average. In my simulation, after 10,000 repeats, the average Pearson correlation coefficient for sample size of 3, where I have generated data randomly from uniform distribution, turned out to be 0.6364 it is not zero i repeated the simulation with different sample sizes from 2 to 100 the result is shown here in this plot the red line shows the relation between sample size and the average pearson correlation coefficient remember all these data are generated by sampling independently independently from the uniform distribution now this average line, this red line showing the average Pearson correlation coefficient drops sharply as we increase the number of samples. But notice even for sample size equal to 10, the average value is above 0.2. The yellow region in this plot shows the range of Pearson correlation coefficients I got in the simulation. For sample size 10, I have correlation values as high as 0.92. This result coming from this random simu simulation using random data is actually very troublesome. Suppose I have a real experiment data with sample size equal to 10. The calculated Pearson correlation coefficient is 0.9. How can I conclude a strong linear relationship between the variables? In this data for, uh, from, of simulation using random numbers, I have got correlation for sample size 10 as high as 0.92. In my sim simulation, several random data sets with independent random uh, uh, numbers had Pearson correlation coefficient as high as 0.9. That means I cannot be sure of a linear association just from the value of R. Now you must be wondering how to solve this problem. But this is not a unique problem in data analysis. Just to help us in such situation, we have statistical test of hypothesis or test of statistical significance like ANOVA, t-test which you may have learned. So here I will perform statistical test on my estimated Pearson correlation coefficients. 
Here I will ask whether the estimated Pearson correlation coefficient is statistically significant. For Pearson correlation coefficient, I will use t-test. The null hypothesis for this test is that rho, the population correlation coefficient is zero. Note that here I am talking about the population level correlation coefficient, not the sample level. The alternate hypothesis is that rho is not equal to zero. I will perform t-test using the data and uh, uh, from that I will get a p-value. If the p-value is less than a cutoff value, say my chosen cutoff value is 0 0.05, then I will reject the null hypothesis. And that will tell me that the estimated Pearson correlation coefficient that I have estimated or calculated from that, the data is statistically significant. Like every other statistical test, you must be aware that t-test also has few assumptions. One assumption is that the variable must have normal distribution. You may not bother this about this assumption if your sample size is large, like uh, you have sample size equal to 20. Otherwise, a test of normality like Sapiro will test is recommended. The other assumptions often made is that both variables have equal variance. This can be tested in R easily using the var.test function. Now, the good news is that R has a function that calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient and also perform the t-test for this coefficient simultaneously. This function is called core.test function. So what I have done, I have used this function to calculate the correlation coefficient and p-value of those coefficient for my those test random data that I have used for my simulation. So for example, take this example. For sample size equal to t, uh, 3, I had used a random data set for which the estimated or calculated Pearson correlation coefficient is minus 0.9837, a very high negative correlation. But the t-test has given me a p-value and that for this uh, data and the p-value is 0.115. It is much greater than 0 0.05, my cutoff. So we have to accept the null hypothesis. That means the correlation coefficient is not statistically significant. What a relief. In fact, when we started the simulation with random data set, we expected to have very low correlation. But somehow we have shown that as uh, for even for this random data, we have got a very high correlation coefficient. but this statistical test is telling me that this estimated correlation coefficient is not statistically significant. Now I have taken a real data which is named as iris data set. It is a real data of sepal length and sepal width. The sample size, I have truncated the data and I have taken the sample size of 10. The Pearson correlation coefficient for this data is 0 0.79, quite a good positive correlation. Now note the p-value, I have performed the t-test also simultaneously. The p-value is much smaller than the cutoff of 0 0.05. So in this case, I reject the null hypothesis. That means the calculated R, the p calculated Pearson correlation coefficient for this data is statistically significant. Now I can reliably conclude that the sepal width and the sepal length has a positive linear association. That's all for this video. Let me jot down what we have learned here. The first key point is that the sample size affects the estimation of Pearson correlation coefficient. And we have seen it one for sample size equal to two. We have done some derivation and I have shown that in that case when sample size equal to two Pearson correlation coefficient has no meaning actually because for every data it will be equal to either plus one or minus one. Then I have used a, a random data sets to show that for small sample sizes, the estimated correlation can be very high, right? So that means for a small sample size, the estimated correlation may lead us to spurious conclusions. The way forward from this problem is that we should always perform statistical test of significance along with the estimation of Pearson correlation coefficient. In this case, we should always perform a t-test along with 
the Pearson estimation of Pearson correlation coefficient to understand what is the statistical whether the estimated correlation coefficient is statistically significant or not. That's all for this video. Thank you for learning with me today.